Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Merry Christmas! This past Tuesday was December 21st and marks the winter solstice. Julio and I will explain what that means and why it's significant to you. It's inevitable the snow will come and bend over your shrubs. We have simple rules to follow to protect your plants. Pests are looking at your home as a warm winter vacationing mm. spot. <laughs> do you have a pool? We'll explain what you can do to prevent or eliminate these snowbirds from invading your home in our third segment. We received a text from a listener, and they had a dilemma. Their shrubs have overgrown their border and asked if they can cut them back. We'll have the answer in our fourth segment. Today's show is airing on Christmas Day or the day after. In our final segment, Huli and I will share with you what Christmas means to us. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and eco-peat. Eco-peat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Church's Garden Center and Farms, Seashore Road, Cape May, New Jersey. Collegeville Do It Best, Ridge Pike, Collegeville, Pennsylvania. County Line Nursery, Harleysville Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider, or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, and throughout history, the winter solstice has been marked with celebration and superstition. <laughs> well, you know, it it really, what it is, and I guess the whole astronomy thing, where it, it's when the sun reaches the Tropic of Capricorn, and we have the shortest day and the longest night of the year in the Northern Hemisphere in right. terms of daylight. So right. it... It doesn't matter what's outside your window. I mean, it really didn't start until this past Tuesday, the 21st. 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 Now, Merry Christmas again. Today is December 25th or yeah. 26th. Sunrise was at 723 this morning. Are you feeling any better, Julio? No, not no? yet. No, <laughs> because the 
actual daylight today, uh -huh. you have 13 seconds extra daylight today. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It keeps on, but it uh -huh. keeps on building. It right. keeps on building. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know that yeah. song, George Harrison. Here comes, here the, comes sun. the sun. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so we like that. so it's coming back. So it and we talk about all the time mm -hmm. where plants are called in to their flowering or to what they're doing by daylight length. We just had the show about poinsettias, where yeah. poinsettias turn red based mm -hmm. on how much light they're given. Getting it. Or not yeah. given, for oh, yeah, maybe really. the case. Mm -hmm. Now, this keeps increasing by daylight all the way through June 22nd. Happy birthday, Adam. That's my son's <laughs> birthday. Sorry. Uh, and that makes me very happy and hopeful. So I have my own superstitions of my own. Or, uh -huh, you, you know, did. just, uh, <laughs> but people have light deprivation issues where they have to get lights and like hang out under sun lamps. Oh, wow. Do yeah. you have that? No. Oh, okay. No, do you? No. <laughs> no. But people do. Oh, yeah. And people do. Wow. It's, a, it's a real thing. It's oh, a, man. yeah. So, Oof. Um, but I think a lot of people, there are more depression during the winter. Right. There's more, yeah. you know, issues that way. Sure. So, you know, about that? it's something to think about. Yep. We, hummingbirds, right? Oh, yeah. We always deal with this in the fall. Should I leave we my do. hummingbird feeder out? Is my hummingbird going to uh, stay around if yeah. I keep feeding it? And the answer is no. Yeah. Because hummingbirds decide to leave to go back across the Gulf of Mexico based on the amount of sunlight. Oh, yeah. And that's what calls, calls them to go not yeah. whether you're feeding them or not. Nah. So you don't have to worry about it. I, you know what? My hummingbird feeders are still out. No. Yeah, yeah. I need to bring them in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little behind on yeah, things, you're okay? A behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Julio, tell me about a tradition that's in history. Like oh, this stuff's yes. old. Old. Oh, this is way, way back. Druid <laughs> Druid traditions. The winter sauce is, is thought of as a time of death. Oh my goodness. And See? rebirth when nature's powers are are and our own souls are renewed. Wow, this marks a moment in time when the old sun dies. That's why they, it's death. At dusk on the 21st of December. And when the new sun uh, comes out of the new year is born. And at dawn on the 22nd of, no of December. That's when it is. It's amazing. Framing the longest night of the year. So the birth of the new sun is thought to revive the earth's aura. My goodness. In mystical ways. So it gives a, a new lease on life to spirits and souls of the dead. Ooh. Well, I mean, I'm see, it goes right back to that sun. I mean, yeah, it, it does. We think we're so smart in the modern age. <laughs> yeah. You know, these guys didn't have the benefits of computers or anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Scandinavia. Now, you've heard a, a Yule log, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can watch it on cable TV now. Did okay. you know that? Yeah, yeah, you don't need a fireplace. Yep. You can just, you know, <laughs> talk into your remote. So where's the Yule log? Gosh. Anyway, but uh, the Yule log idea is from Scandinavia, and it's the Feast of Yule, yeah. was a festival observed in fires that were lit to symbolize the heat, light, and life-giving properties of the return of the sun. So a Yule log was brought in and burned on the hearth in honor of the Scandinavian god Thor. Oh, my gosh. Thor? Yes, He's the one with the hammer, him. right? The hammer guy. He's yeah. the hammer guy. <laughs> Thor's job was not to, like, be on Marvel Comics, but he was there to bring the sun's warmth back to the people. The log, which was never allowed to burn entirely, was kept as both a token of good luck against misfortune and the use as kindling for next year's celebration. About that, pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Um, ancient Rome mm -hmm. winter solstice festival, referred to as Saturnalia, began December seventeenth and lasted for seven days. Wow, look at that. Yeah, mm, yeah. A little festival. They know how to party. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, those Romans or, uh, or something. Those Romans, <laughs> <laughs> you Romans out there, they're yeah. still around. You still know how to party. That's right. Uh, but the, the whole idea was that it was a suspension of of quarrels and grudges. They were all forgiven. Wars were postponed during this time. Mm. People engaged in carnival-like festivities. And, you know, it continued into the third and fourth centuries. Yeah. But when time. Rome became, I guess, it uh, became under a Christian rule, some of those festivals and customs have turned into why we celebrate some of these same type of things mm -hmm. at Christmas and New Year's, mm -hmm. you know, 
goodwill towards men, right. you know, right. all those good right. tidings, all yep. those things. Mm-hmm. Enjoy. It, so it's it goes all the way back to being kind of a tie into that Saturnalia. So Saturnalia, yeah. About I love the the next fact. Yeah, the pilgrims. Pilgrims. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. How, how coincidence that? or planned? Mm, planned. What is it, Will? <laughs> I think it's a plan. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, they're coming from a long way. Go ahead. Tell us. Let's oh, talk yeah. about it. No, they, they arrived in Plymouth on December 21st, 1620. How about that, huh? Sure. You go. would have thought of that. That's right. And they found a society that would allow right, them to be uh, worshiping freely. And, and, on, and on the same day in 1898, listen to this Pierre and Marie Curie discovered radium. Mm. Ushering in at the atomic age. Uh oh. Ominous. Wow. Ominous. And then also in 1968, December 21st, the Apollo 8 spacecraft oh, launched, becoming the first manned moon mission. Wow. Look at that. Hmm. About that. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Those of you that are out there, yeah. you're getting more light today yeah, and tomorrow right. and the next day uh, and the next day. So yeah. if you have a little bit of depression working in, just that's something that you can look forward yeah, to. Yeah, that's right. Rather than long lines returning your gifts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, with winter comes snow, and we're going to talk about that mm, in right. our next segment. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. 
Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, it may not feel like it today, but it is eventually going to snow. Oh, yeah. You know, it happens every year. Every year. What do I do? My Arbor Vitae's are falling over. Oh, what yeah. do I do? I brought a broom out and I beat it. And I got the snow off, but they're still on the ground. Oh. Well, I you know, this is probably one of my favorite segments because uh-huh. it's what the instructions that we have for you. And it happens with Arbor Vitae especially, where, where that snow weight hits them and they just kind of fall over and it yeah. looks like they're you know they're going to be ground cover from now on oh, yeah. <laughs> it happens to i mean if you have leyland cypress if oh. you have arbor Vitae, and it just weighs them down mm-hmm. but i have good news you don't have to do anything oh that's great <laughs> <laughs> don't get the snow blower out don't get the blower out yeah. you know they let nature take care of it They'll do the work. It'll melt in time. They'll spring back up. You may not be able to see it in real time, but they'll eventually straighten out. If there is still a problem in the spring, at that point, you can maybe do some corrective pruning or you can do maybe some staking. But generally, they all spring back. Hey, we're having more sun, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that they don't want to grow along the ground. So you just let it go. In a show probably, what, a month from now, two months from now, we're going to be talking about winter pruning. Yes, we will. And that there are a lot of plants that you'll do that early spring winter pruning to clean up gla- grasses, hydrangeas, right, all? Anna, so sit back, relax, put another log on the fire, <laughs> sip that go. hot toddy, yeah. <laughs> and just stay indoors. <laughs> That's right. That's a new word I've never heard of. Toddy. What? Hot toddy? Toddy. Hot toddy. I think it's got rum in it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't had a hot toddy either. Uh, well, but, uh, we'll, fu- we'll figure that one out. But but it's funny because it, uh-huh. it strikes panic into people oh, when God. they see those Arbor Vitae's. And oh, that, yeah. it's just a natural thing that occurs, especially with that first snow when it's really, really yeah. wet and heavy. Oh, my goodness. You're hurting the plants yeah. if you're trying to shake them off yeah. and, and let them go back. And they, they usually don't. They just yeah. stay that way for a while. So, I don't yeah. know. Do you have anything to add to that, Julio? Yeah, you know, I, I, my neighbors, they, they must love their uh, doing that because I see them all the time. They get their, their brooms out. Oh, my right. God. You know, it's like. Right. That's what it looks. You know, it's like they wanted to, they wanted to see the plant. <laughs> yeah. It's, most people don't go out in the, the, uh, the landscape the entire year, except when those trees <laughs> so, go down. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to get my broom and I'm going to beat the snot Stay out of my it. arbor vine. <laughs> So I'll tell you oh what, it's, you have uh, you have our instruction, uh-huh. relax, yeah. just relax. Yeah. You don't need to do anything. They'll spring back on their own. If you try to force them, oh my gosh, I've had yeah. somebody try to force them back mm-hmm. into an upright position. Right. No good. No good. No good. <laughs> you might as well say No good. It. No yeah. good. So yeah. there you go. That was an easy one. Yeah, it that was. was an easy one. Yeah, it was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. On that case, we're going to take a break. Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back in the garden right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. Ecopeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at 
Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, Emmis, Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, everybody out there, if you're like Len and I, yeah. longing for a winter vacation somewhere warm, you're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Mice, stink bugs, crickets, all are there too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're not going to Florida or the Caribbean. No, no. They're, they're they're coming into your house. <laughs> <They're not. laughs> they may be there already. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> you and I were talking about field mice. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know... They're cute until they're in your, you know, bread basket. <laughs> no, really. Now, you uh-huh. are, have you had mice before? No, I haven't had it, but I think I'm going to have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, why, why do you say that? Do you see them in the backyard or something? Well, my backyard is like really needs a clean up. Yeah. And it yeah, and I got so. a lot of shrubs and you know you name it <laughs> weeds. <laughs> All season, I talked about the cutting garden that I grew and everything right. else. Yeah, it's, it's still there. <laughs> it's it's still there, so I haven't cut it down. Right. And the reason why we're talking about this is that the mice are looking for a place to hide, that they're Mm. not going to cross an open area. They're They're afraid that like some hawk is going to come get them or, you know, Uh, some people don't like feral, feral cats, (laughs) but, uh, (laughs) <laughs> you know, yeah, right. you know, uh, those of us that have had mice problems ha- don't have them if there's some feral cats around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so that's and that's a thing where mm-hmm. I know that these days you're not supposed to let your cat out, yeah. right? So, yeah. Yeah. but I, I see him outside. <laughs> you see your yeah. cat, cats outside? Yeah. No, I, I, you know, nah. yeah, I had to sign a paper when I adopted my oh, cats that I wouldn't let it outside. Oh, how about that? Yeah, how about yeah. that? I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. now they're. You know, now they're inside. Uh, they're inside <laughs> with the mice. That's right. <laughs> no, we actually don't have a mice uh, okay. problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so just like Julio, I'm yeah. waiting for them to find their way inside. Yeah. But they are just looking for some place to, to escape yeah. uh, the cold. And you can use a repellent. Like we use Mouse Magic, and it's a, a bonide product, and it's like a little pouch. And it doesn't smell bad. It, yeah. It's actually a natural ingredient, spearmint and peppermint oil. Ooh, I like that. And what it does is it triggers a flight response mm-hmm. in the, the, the mice where right. it's like, oh, we're not going here. Let's get yeah. out of here. We got to get, pack your bags. <laughs> <laughs> we hate this hotel. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we're going back to downtown Disney. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to Julio's house. Yeah, come on, I got plenty of food. <laughs> but the thing is, is that it, it's a repellent. So it doesn't, and it's all natural. So mm-hmm. it, it's safe for kids. It's mm-hmm. safe for for pets, pets, so it's not like a poison. Mm-hmm. Um, boy, you know, poisons, I, I don't like poisons. No, I don't either. And the reason, yeah. I don't, it's not for what you think. Uh-huh. Poisons, you don't know when they're the mouse, 
rat, rodent, whatever you want to call it, keels over. And sometimes it's between the walls of your house, oh, and then they begin to rot Smells, and they stink. Yeah. Ooh. yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, no. So poison is not yeah. something yeah. something that that we recommend, but mm-hmm. severe enough problem, you know, outside, sure. outside, I would say okay, but inside, you know, you've got to have it protected because they have those cages for poison where it's a plastic, right? Plastic, uh, like it's flat topped, and that they have to go in it. To eat it, so it's not exposed to children, other yeah. types of pets, things like that. So that's pretty awesome. That's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. A lot of fast food places have them around it, <laughs> <laughs> so you make t- think <laughs> twice about you know eating yeah. there. But uh, yeah. again, that's the only time, and still right. you don't know where they're going to end up. Mm-hmm. You know where their last breath right. step. <laughs> yeah, no. Hopefully, it's not in your house. No, it's not. <laughs> This sounds nasty. Exactly. Okay, glue traps. Glue. Have you ever used glue traps? No, but I I wouldn't want to use it. Oh, I am. Oh, you are. Give me them glue traps. Oh, really? Yeah. It's Why? Just, because by the time uh-huh. I'm so frustrated because they've ripped holes in my bread, uh, or they and I've thrown right. out the, another loaf of bread, right. or there's another issue where they, you know, <laughs> it's war. Oh, it's yeah? war. Oh my gosh. I'll take a glue trap, uh-huh. right? Right. And. I'll take one of those, I guess it's like a little plastic, you know, I think you can get them like Ziploc makes them or one of those plastic, you know, I think maybe Glade has them, where I put the glue trap in there and I cut a little hole in it. All right. And I actually use a granola bar (laughs) (laughs) as bait. Oh, gosh. And this is probably a couple of years ago. Uh And uh, that was in the drawer where they were getting at the bread. And it worked. No more. Okay. Yep. No more. And that you're worried that like they're gonna like people say, oh, they chew their legs off or they do yeah. all this other stuff. No. Yeah. no. What happens yeah. is that they eventually, you know, that they get so. Right. It. Look, it's not the nicest thing, but then again, they should say the heck out of my, you know, bread drawer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's my food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go outside and stick it out like the other poor mice. Oh gosh. <laughs> So you put that you get a, you buy a little plastic uh, like a little box right right yeah it's those, like, those like, things like a, that you would put food yeah, in food you in, know yeah. you to, to you, put in your refrigerator yeah you ought to patent that <laughs> <laughs> hey hey <Glenn>. shh <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you know? um, have a heart traps oh yeah we have used have a heart traps we had yep. squirrels in where our bird oh the bird sanctuary, right, the bird yeah. sanctuary mm-hmm. and man they oh. were destructive. And that what we did is we were able to capture them in a uh, have a heart trap. Mm-hmm. And that was a, a good way to get rid of them because yeah. you could just take them and move them to, you know, don't put them outside. Duh. <laughs> I mean, uh, people do. They say, oh, yeah, I brought it, I caught it, and I put it put right it outside, outside and uh, then came right back in. Again, again. <laughs> yeah, no, you need to move it, you know, several miles away. Right. Find, you know, I wouldn't advertise where you're putting it. Yeah. I would just put find it. a nice secluded area don't put it like oh the farm won't mind and your, your local no. you know farm market or no. farmer he doesn't want them no, he doesn't want that you know someplace <laughs> <No>. where secluded <laughs> kind of park <laughs> yeah, <there we> go. <laughs> yeah. i said park yeah, said p-a-r-k okay. um but uh anyway right. you decide where you want to that's not a recommendation Right. We do have a disclaimer before the show starts. Yeah, we right? do. Yeah. All right, just making sure. But right. to have a heart traps absolutely work well. Uh-huh. Um, I've got a good story. Go ahead. So little kid, right? Right. To have my bedroom as a little kid in the right. my family's home, which was ne- right next to the attic. Every winter, we would have a family of raccoons oh. that would move in. Yeah. And raccoons make a lot of noise, and their noises aren't always nice, especially <laughs> when it's a family. I mean, right. it's like you know, living next to the Simpsons, but oh. that growl. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, right. and that they would scratch on the door oh, in the middle of the night. Yeah. And that's the one thing about raccoons, they're nocturnal. Yeah. So they're, oh my gosh. Uh, gosh. <laughs> the nightmares, <laughs> yes, I'm still, uh, still seeing therapists about, about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but still, have a heart trap, clear them out. Clear them out, look at that. Yep. Shh. You know, relocated them, and that, mm-hmm. that's how it was done. That's right. But I'll tell you what, raccoons can get it into your – I've had oh, a lot yeah. of customers that have said that they have issues with raccoons. Um, ponds, ponds yeah. right? We have had customers that were the raccoons are going into their ponds and eating their koi. Oh, look at that. 
You know, they think it's the wild. It's like, well, look at this. So, yeah. You know, where <laughs> they're eating like, you know, $100 fish. Yeah, oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but brother. it's it's not only like animals, mm-hmm. but it's also um, stink bugs. Oh, and yes. Ha, yes. Do you have any stink bugs in your house? I, I saw a couple. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and what they're doing, the stink bugs especially, that they're going – into your house to yeah. die, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, and because you like move the curtain, and all of a sudden you'll find Boom. a dead spit stink yeah. bug, and you're saying, "How the heck did that, that thing get there? there? <laughs> How long has it been there?" Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, so they're easier at that time. And that, yeah. Have you ever had this happen? Right. That stink bug falls, and you go to pick it up, and all of a sudden it starts moving. Oh okay. no! Freak you out a little oh, bit. Yeah. yeah. No, it never happened. <laughs> never happened well, no. You don't live. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, then? <laughs> not really. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Because not only does it move, it uh-huh. stinks. It stinks. <laughs> yeah. And then my fingertips smell all day. Oh <laughs> <You> gosh, <know? laughs> Mr. Stinky. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. It's not that big a deal. Crickets start Crickets. moving yeah. into your garage. Oh, it's man. probably a little cold right now. Yeah. That that they're not as big an issue. Yeah. Uh, but crickets can be like in your basement. That's right. Where all of a sudden you, you're greeted by you, you go downstairs and you're greeted by a chorus of crickets. So that can happen. That can happen. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, plenty of insecticides that you can use for indoor purposes. Like we like th- thrins, thrins, right? Yeah, thrins. thrins. Delta methrin is yeah. one of them. That uh, look for delta methrin as a. Uh, it's a good. And, and we say it all the time, mm-hmm. it is a man-made synthetic pyrethrin, which has copied the chemistry from an o- organic source. But the change that was made is it doesn't break down in sunlight the same way the natural pyrethrin does, and therefore it has a longer residual. Wow. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful, <laughs> but it, it's accurate, and yep, it's something it that uh, definitely, definitely, um, I know I use it at my home. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It works. Ants, spiders, crickets, uh, stink bugs, controls them all. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. Um, any other, do you have any other insect pests during the the winter months that yeah, are thinking really. your home is, you know, Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're going to Miami. Miami. Pack your bags. Yes, there we go. See, you're Cuban. That's right. I'm That's going right. Down. They hear you. They think, all right, all let's right, go. Let's we got to be in Miami. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, anyway, but uh, don't be uh, don't be weirded out for it. A lot of them are just finding a temporary home. They, a lot of a lot of times, uh, you just need to be vigilant and that you know don't ignore it either. I mean, yeah. especially with mice because they breed so fast. Oof. Uh, they breed so quick yeah. and that you want to get rid of them. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, if you've got questions. Yeah. If you have found mice, mm-hmm. call the hotline. Call the hotline. Let us know your situation. And, and then yeah, we'll, we'll help guide you to getting rid of them and what mm-hmm. products you can use or what methods you can use to really right. eliminate that problem. Because, I mean, I know that I have kept that same uh, glue trap. Oh, you have. In in my drawer, oh, okay. I never even though I haven't had mice in probably two years. Right, you still have I have I still have it in there in just in case. You never know. Like for instance, where where's your trash can in your kitchen? Is it under your sink? Uh, no, I I keep it near the sink. Near the sink. Yeah. But is it? Is, does it have a lid or is it no lid? See. Yeah. That some people that like and I noticed this was my problem. Uh-huh. I had the trash can under the sink. Okay. And therefore, it was easy access oh, yeah. that they would come up from the basement or the windows from out from I oh. guess the basement okay. come through and they'd root through the trash through and then they yeah. would there's a hole that they tunneled through to get to the oh, cabinet gosh. where the bread is. Smart. 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 Yeah. And they leave those little jelly beans for you to figure <laughs> out that they've been there. You know, that's their calling card, you know. Yeah, no. But uh, no, not no, not no. necessarily smart. So I got rid of the trash can and yeah. no longer under our sink. Yeah. That also has helped. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's call, it. Call our hotline number, 609-685-1880, and we'd like to hear your story. That's right. All right. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
1-888-888-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties, from aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. He's Julio. Merry Christmas. Christmas. That's right. Yes. You know, <laughs> we had a text this week, and we go through this all the time. When we're helping folks in the nursery design their landscape, a lot of times they have it backwards where they want to create their bed shape and then fit the plant to the bed shape mm -hmm. as yeah. opposed to letting the plants determine what that bed shape should, should be. be. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. Julio, <laughs> you you took care of this, right? Yes, I did. And tell me about what it what happened. You got a text, right, with pictures. I got a text with pictures and he said, uh, you know, Well, what was the pictures up? Oh, they were junipers. That they were nice and uh, cut back. Tight. And tidy, tidy, tidy. Green yep. meatballs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to our listener. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Art loves but, you anyway. But they, they were really tight. Like you they could bounce tight. a quarter off them. Oh, I know. Yeah, they were really tight. <laughs> they were tight, yeah. Which meant that they were, they've been there a long been time. Been there a while. Yeah, a while, yeah. And, right. and what he wanted to do was cut them back to the shape of the bed. Right, and I said to him, "Well, you know, it's not going to work that well." But uh, what I would do is, I would expand that bed. <laughs> you, know? you just gave the answer away. Yeah, I know. The when you try to cut them back, I mean, it's like going back in time. You just can't. And that he would reveal the inside, which has basically no living foliage at the moment, because it drops all that out. And these plants were big. I mean, the natural purchase size of those were probably two, two by two, maybe, right. maybe, you know, maybe as big as three by three, but I doubt it. Mm -hmm. The ones he was showing you, they were almost six foot across. Oh, yeah, at least. And so two foot of it overhung oh, yeah. his straight bed. Mm -hmm. And no. the, the other, honestly, mm -hmm. he, he should rip them out and start all over. Start, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, they must be 25 years old, maybe. Oh, probably. 
25 yeah. for, to be that big. Yeah, it's been big. You got your money worth out of them, oh, especially yeah. the junipers. I mean, oh, yeah. th- like now they're probably, you know, 39.99 something like that, Not 40 bad. bucks. Not bad at all. Where back then they were probably 20. 20 bucks. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's time to rip them out. Yeah. And that's probably your best bet right. and it can be a lot of work to get them out, but you'll be so much more satisfied because you can put in the right plants that will fit that bed right. or you go and extend that bed, like you said. He right. and it was a straight line bed. Straight line, yeah. straight line bed. Straight line bed. No yeah. like you know lazy asses or no. anything. No kidney shapes. No, no no nothing. No nothing. Which is fine. Yeah. But he needs to extend it at least two feet, mm-hmm. and that's two feet of grass that he has uh-huh. to cut out, and it's two feet more than you know. He's got to decide what to do, but he mm-hmm. still has these great big meatballs oh, yeah. that are that that are that need to. And and that's all that was in the bed, right? That's all was in the bed. Yeah, it was nothing, no, no. nothing more diverse. Like no. there wasn't like any deciduous plants. It was all no. Just all nice. juniper. Mm-hmm. It was like spreading juniper. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's time to start oh, over. Yeah. yeah, it's time to start over because you'd be much more happier right. with that. So. Right. You know. You know what? Really tough is when you have a plant, right? And it, you know it's going to grow, like you're saying, five six feet. Right. And you only got a, a bed that's only. Two or three foot wide. Right. I mean, you know, that, that's tough. I you mean, get to you a point, you can cut it back, but you get to a point where you just can't cut it back yeah. anymore. And yeah. that's the spot where he's in with these junipers. Oh, yeah. So, yep. again, it, it's don't be timid or you know, avoid feeling weird that you <laughs> that you put a small plant in a big bed right. because they're meant to grow. When you design... You're designing at the full size, not the size the plant is when you buy it. Right. So. Yeah. Did you Did you ever Did you text him or talk to him? No, I spoke to him. Yeah, I said make your beds bigger, and, and that's what I like. You Was know, he open to that? Oh yes, because he's got grass. Right. And, and, and I said, you, you know, you can do that. And he's got a straight line of it looks straight like um, uh, river jacks, like he does. you know, like a maybe. Three to five inch river jack That's that right. he uses as a border. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's gonna have to move that too. Yeah, move that too. Yeah. Well, he's got a landscaper, so he, you know, he does his work. Okay. You know, so he's, you know, he's all right. You know, he can, he can do that for him. Yeah. And I said, you know, just make that bed nice and bigger, you know, and um, and you'll have uh, plenty of room. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. It's uh, and, and that's, the, I think that the mindset is like, you know, you have a home and it's always been three foot wide and, uh, it, right. and you can't, you don't get out of that, <laughs> you know, that uh, whole thing. And I noticed on some of those plants, and this happens to a lot of people, where the back is grown so much that it's up against the house. Oh, the house, yeah. And that whole side that's up against the house, it dies. It di- yeah, There's no, su- and, it, and it doesn't die because it's, the plant's fault. It just doesn't get any sunlight. Mm-hmm. So what happens? The yeah. foliage that is exposed to the sunlight is mm-hmm. producing food for the plant. So therefore, that stays alive. The other stuff dies out. That's why in the center of a lot of evergreens, there's nothing there. People say, oh, look, it's all dead inside. Well, it's not dead. It's just mm-hmm. that it doesn't get enough sunlight to produce any food. So it gets rid of it. Gets rid of it, yeah. It gets rid of it. So, and air circulation, too, is another problem. Right, You know. right. 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 That, that can lead to other problems other, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But, Insects come in and you got all kinds of problems. Yeah. <laughs> but the issue is yeah. design your landscape based on the full size of the plant right. and don't feel inadequate because the plants look a little small when you put them in because mm-hmm. they're meant to grow. Yeah. And then that always makes room for things like annuals and things yeah. like bulbs. And, a little color, right? Yeah. And that you can do things that are a little bit different. Yeah. But once the plants fill in, there's not going to be many room for room, that. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. But remember, bed shape is determined by the size of the plant, not the other way around. Yeah. That, that's a great rule right there. Yep. Well, you know? Yep. And it's color, texture, form. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, the other that's rule. what we like. <laughs> 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 All right. We're going to be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. 
If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Offers of Kissel Hill Home and Garden Store, Roristown, Pennsylvania, Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. We are back at Bloomers in the Garden. During the, this holiest of time of year, we often get reflective, right? Mm-hmm. And sentimental over events, people, and things that have impacted us over the past few months, huh, Len? That's for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible time. Our listeners are amazing. Yep, they are. We um, talk to a lot of them in that we love getting phone calls Mm -hmm. and that we're, I mean, we, we're real people. You know, yeah, it's, not, it's not like we're like some robot. Yeah, but, uh, I think you are. Yeah, well, no, I am definitely not a robot. I make way too many mistakes. Yeah. But I mean, Julio, you talk to most people on I the do. phone. Yeah, I do. And that um, some of those some of those conversations can get, become pretty personal. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's they amazing can. on how many horticulture things are often related to past family members mm-hmm. or you know, my husband used to do this right. and that he's passed or, or that, you know, my mom, she loved this rose. That's right. It's, I, I, I find our listeners to be amazing that, uh, you know, that they are, they have become our friends. They have, they have. you know, we're, you know, Pat, number one fan, mm-hmm. <laughs> Pat, you know, yeah. Harold, Harold always Pearl, there. Pearl, yeah. Pearl, Pearl, like the necklace, like the necklace. Yeah. They, there have been so many that have, um, have truly like become our close friends. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they have, they're like family, you know, they, you get to know them, you get to know Mm -hmm. know, about their families, about what like, what they like to do and, uh, you know, yep. uh, Yep. Um, (laughs) where they're going for the winter. winter, (laughs) So, so, but, uh, and even some of those folks that don't call that often, like Dr. Jim, Jim, your, yep, Dr. Your, Jim is great. Yeah, he is uh, has been a customer since we opened, mm-hmm. and that he is from our hometown, and that where mm-hmm. he just is uh, a great guy. Yeah, um, great guy. And our sponsors, oh yeah, our sponsors, you know, Coast of Maine, Espoma, Espoma yeah, us, they they are companies that have integrity that mm-hmm. is just amazing. Um, Fertilome, which oh, is uh, kind of new to this market and expanding, right? But I've known the I've known that company for twenty five years. Wow! And that they originally are, you know, Texas and and that part of that the area. West where um, 
but they are making products meant to work because it's an owner-owned co-op. It's not like it's some big conglomerate sure. that owns them. It's it's a uh, it's an owner like so people like me that has a garden center, an independent garden center, is a collection uh, of people like me that you know we need to have this kind of product because it works, right. not because we can make a fortune on it. Right. That helps, but sure. <laughs> still, yeah, that's right. but still, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great to have that. It yeah. is. How about our crew here? Brett, oh, where Brett. are you? Oh. He's crawling under the table trying to get the thing where, yeah. you know, Brett makes us sound great every yeah, week. Does. We, we actually don't sound anything like this, yeah. you know, yep. we have Mickey Mouse voices and <laughs> yeah, it makes, a, makes right. her feel great, right? Yeah. 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 He's wonderful. And he gets to cut out the times where you go, um, um uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brett makes us look good. He is, he he is does. The, tr- the true artist behind us. He we, is, isn't he? Yeah. But uh, again, Laura. <laughs> Laura, yeah. Laura is the Laura's best. Great. And Sam, I know Sam. you're out there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. hiding somewhere, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's like, no price increase for next year. That's you got correct. it, Sam? <laughs> so, but uh, oh, really, and that we couldn't do it if we didn't have the folks back at Bloomer's. Sure. You know, when we leave, somebody's got to work the store, and right. that being that they're there. Um, mm-hmm. And personally, Julio, you know, you and Andy, your brother, yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, so. you know, um, as far as me, I, I you know, I, I love my Bloomer's family, of course. And, yeah. uh, you know, I've been there for uh, 13 years, oh and uh, it's amazing that, to be in a place where, you know, you, you get to grow. Uh, and friendships and relationships together, and you know we grow together. And, right. And um, you know you know me for a little bit, and uh, uh, we know each it. other, and uh, you know we we hang out, and uh, not only at radio, but you know outside of radio. Yeah. And, Julio, you make me a better man. Oh, uh, you do too. <laughs> it's like sharpening iron, right? That's it. <laughs> iron sharpers iron. But yep. uh, you know, I uh, I also love um, you know this time of year for my family, of course, and uh, you know we we have. Uh, uh, very little because of, uh, you know we I'm from Cuba so um, you know there aren't many around and uh, some of them are too far away but right. you know I love my cousins uh, they're they're always calling me all the time and uh, I find that you appreciate things more Julio than a lot of people that maybe you know have so, like people that have I'm gonna say it some people that have a lot. Mm-hmm. That sometimes they are missing the fact of what it's like to to struggle a bit, you know. Yeah, you know, you get that perspective of you know um, when you come from another country and uh, that that changes your whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you know, and I thank the Lord for that because uh, you know uh, he, He's given me everything that uh, I, I uh, I've been given. You know, freedom, freedom, freedom is great here. You know, and um, we love that. And wow. uh, that's another aspect of uh, coming from another. Uh, country which is communist and um so uh, you know we love that a lot and it, that was ingrained in my ha- home and uh, yeah we've talked about your dad often yeah, and about did. how yeah. you know he didn't want you wanted to retain your your cuban heritage but mm-hmm. become americans that's right and yeah. that, that mm-hmm. needed that a little bit today don't you think yeah i think so yeah and you know sometimes it's tough when you uh you know when you uh lose your parents it, sometimes you know this is a tough time for for many of you out there but it's a joyful time too though you know and um you know think of it as a celebration and um you know being around the people that you love the most that's so important that's right you know? that's right and and also from our listeners we know some of you guys out there are you know facing a battle a, a little bit on the loneliness side that's and that, right yeah. you know we we understand oh yeah we understand yeah. Um, some of you may know or not know, but, uh, my wife is approaching her eighth year with, uh, Alzheimer's. She was diagnosed at the age of 50, um, and that I couldn't do it, uh, without my family. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got three kids and that each one of them help. but I'll tell you what, my son, Carl, he lives at home still. He is 26 and he takes care of his mom better than I could ever imagine that anyone doing it. Amen. Yep. Uh, we're very fortunate that uh, my wife Debbie has got a very happy disposition, and uh, we have somebody special, Elisa. Elisa, uh, yes. Elisa <laughs> is uh, another Cuban. <laughs> yeah, she is another Cuban. <laughs> also, a happy disposition. Yes, <laughs> uh, she is the best, and that yep. she. Yeah, we love her. You know, she loves 
Debbie, like it's, it's her own family oh, yeah. and that I couldn't ask for anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has a young daughter, Elisa Haley, who mm-hmm. brightens our world every oh, time she yeah. comes to visit. That's right. Elisa makes a, a bean, uh, rice and beans. Well, you would know. <laughs> Authentic. <laughs> That's Authentic. Right. Yeah. We loved her for that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I just, she, she is part of our family. Mm-hmm. Um, all of, uh, Debbie is, is on hospice and she's been the last two years and, and that all of the, the folks that are friends that still visit and check in, right. um, you know, and you talked about loneliness that, uh, it, it's been tough, you know, and that, yeah. uh, that uh, a friend who I've known for, for over 30 years has basically drawn me back into living again. Yeah, that's great. Um, the encouragement that I get and the, being allowed to become adopted by their family. That's great. Um, you know, it's uh, my responsibilities at home have not changed, but as far as being able to have a place to go and a ple- you know, somebody to talk to, to vent sure. to, has been incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the one thing that we, Huli and I are both, uh, both Christians and mm-hmm. we're thankful to God who provided us a yes. Savior. Amen. This Christmas season, I want everyone to consider, you know, Jesus was fully God, yet he lived as a man. Mm -hmm. He knows our trials. He knows what it's like to be, you know, hurting for somebody that is sick. He worked, he, he walked this earth in our skin and he allowed himself to be crucified for me and for you and to redeem us. Mm -hmm. Salvation starts with the holy birth of Jesus Christ. I want you all to spend some time considering that this holiday season. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of all, thank you to everybody that thank makes you, everybody. this show happen. Yes. And I know, Brett, we're going over time. You're yep. going to figure it out because you yes, are the is. extraordinaire. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Producer extraordinaire, Brett Kromberger. All right. <laughs> We've got to take a quick break. Then we'll be right back just for a quick wrap-up. Mm-hmm. We'll be back right after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, we got uh, we are Boy, overtime, Julio. So yes. we got to wrap. Uh, wrap we're going to see you guys right here in the garden next week, and yes. we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.